Last time on Super Dragon Ball Heroes Ultra Gold Mission. It was discovered that this space time tournament is actually a way of culling the herd of alternate timelines. If you lose the fight, your timeline disappears. So it makes a lot of sense that Kronoa would send in the time patrol to try to handle this situation. The only question is. Why is the previous Supreme Kai of Time doing this? Is it simply because she feels that things have gotten too out of hand with too many alternate timelines? Or is there something deeper to what she's planning? Join me as I find out, won't you? If you lose, your space-time disappears. Worst crisis in Super Dragon Ball Heroes history. And you see the universes, well the specific timelines, time scrolls, completely evaporated. False histories will be erased. The Time Patrol goes up against the ultra dangerous Ao. Zeno Goten is shocked. Those people, their whole time scroll was erased. Trunks grabs his sword. How could you? And we see the masked figure on the Z Time Patroller team looking on in disdain. Ao state, this was the fate of these histories. That's all. Goten then says, huh? The attacks disappeared? Oh, no, missed the page. Trunks then goes in for a massive attack, shouting, What is fate about this? Why do you get the right to decide? The lives of these peoples living in each of these histories? Wait, I read that wrong. Why do you get the right to decide the lives of these people living in each of these histories? There we go. That breaking word balloons was a little unnatural and kind of threw me. Alright, his attack approaches Eos, and Eos simply states, That's because I'm the supreme kind of time. And thus she snaps her fingers, and Trunks' attack vanishes. Goten looks on questioning what happened to Trunks' attack, but then he also realizes, Huh? Where did Trunks go? The masked... The hooded figure and Zeno Goku only just now realize that he's gone as well. Zeno Pan states, It was her! She even erased Trunks! Kid asks Jiren, Did you see what happened? And even Jiren says, No. <laughs> Harps! Ooh, it, it's gotten his gander up because, I mean, gods who don't care about mortals and will erase them with a snap of their fingers? That's Harps' whole MO right there. Zeno Gohan questions Eos, saying, but it's weird, there should only be one Supreme Kai of Time, no matter how many histories there are. Eos explains, I am the former Supreme Kai of Time to be exact, but it seems like it was too early to put her in charge of time after all. When the eventual time comes for the true history to be decided, I'm going to reclaim the title of Supreme Kai of Time. Goten then shouts, I'm against the Supreme Kai of Time who doesn't care about people. Pen adds, me too, me too. Eos then states, like I said, don't measure things by mortal standards. To maintain the balance of time, they had to disappear. Goten pr Zeno prepares an attack saying, that's not true. Gohan does as well, saying, there has to be another way to maintain balance. Even Pan prepares herself. Timey is good enough as the Supreme Kai of Time. Does Pan not know her name is Granoa? Hearts readies an attack saying, This is why I hate God. And both versions of Vegeta say, Bring back Trunks now. Ooh, you got the daddy's angry. And with their powers combined, unleashing each of their attacks upon Eos, a massive explosion erupts in the world between time? I actually don't know what the name of this place is. Oh, and through the smoke, Vegeta notices four hooded figures protecting Ao. Huh. Okay, they've been keeping this secret close to the vest. Because, as far as I know so far, this is the first time I've found out that one of them is a female. That's kind of throwing me. I wonder who that is. But one of them seems like they might be Barda. Another seems like maybe an alternate version of Piccolo? And I think another is an alternate version of future Gohan. Hmm. It's weird that they're serving her. Maybe they're people who have been lost to time? Something along those lines? Had their timelines taken away and Aos is controlling them? Hmm. But one of the hooded figures is the one that helped Goku out in that alternate universe that Fu had created. And Goku says, it's him. However, Aos threatens all of our heroes saying, you're very rebellious and insolent. Would you guys like to disappear too? 
and ready to snap her fingers. And as Eos unleashes her ability, the entirety of the Time Patroller team glows and disappears. Golden Frieza states, Oh, Haas or whatever his name is. He's gone too, isn't he? Because he didn't know his place and defied the existence of a god. Cumber shoots Golden Frieza a wicked loot. A look, and Golden Freezer states, Oops, excuse me, are you a friend of his? Huh, but then Cumber is gone. Much to Golden Freezer's shock, he says, He's gone too? Why him too? But then Golden Freezer and his entire team is gone. Goku looks on in shock as Yamcha shouts, Hey, they're all disappearing! That girl seems very dangerous to me! But then Goku disappears. As Yamcha thinks, hey, hey, what's going on? He didn't even blink, and he disappeared without a sound or sign. But then Yamcha realizes most of his allies have all disappeared. He says, eh, before I even realized that Piccolo, Gohan, even that hit guy is gone. Thank goodness, Jiren is still here. You still haven't disappeared. And then, before he could even finish his sentence, Jiren is gone as well. Much to Yamcha's shock. You've gotta be kidding me. Am I really the only one left? Yamcha begins to run, shouting, I gotta run, but there's no place to run. As the figures who were standing around Aos also disappear. But Aos laughs at Yamcha's rather pathetic display, let's be honest. As Yamcha fa flails about to her, shouting, Wait, 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 please, don't erase me. Ao simply states, <laughs> I'm kidding. I was just messing around. I didn't really erase them. Yamcha is shocked. She explains to Yamcha, During the time freeze where everything stops except me, I sent them all to the second round. I didn't expect you to be that surprised. Well, give it your best in order to survive. And thus Yamcha, the last, disappears. Yamcha arrives in a land of gears and crystals and he thinks he says to himself what the heck they really were all just sent to the next stage that surprised and scared me well i thought it might be something like that <laughs> yeah right but still what is this place this doesn't look like earth the little sprite judge thingy shows up and says oh so you're here at last i've already explained the rules to the other contestants the rules for the second round of the super space time tournament are the same as the first round defeat your opponent's team and survive or capture the fairy millie in one of the areas yamsha questions this really we just have to capture the fairy again this time? Then again, maybe I'll be the hero who leads the team to victory. <laughs> the judge says, I don't know about that. This time, the fairy is being held by one of the warriors in black. And you see all the warriors in black in different areas. The one with scars on his hand who seems to be a Saiyan, possibly Bardock, sits stands atop a bluff. The one female warrior in black sits atop a crystalline structure, possibly in the same area as Yamcha. The one armed warrior in black, possibly an alternate version of Gohan, future Gohan, walks through some destroyed ruins as the judge states, the four elites chosen by Lady Aos. Uh, I guess the one I first saw was the Namekian. I couldn't quite make him out. So you have the Namekian in black, the woman in black, the one-armed warrior in black, and then you have the Saiyan with the scarred hands in black. The judge then states, Furthermore, they were given an unimaginable power by Dark Shenron, so it won't be easy to beat them. He should questions himself, Dark? And so he says to himself, oh, Okay, first things first, I'm going to go meet up with my teammate. You know, now that I think about it. Okay, so the one Namekian, he's obviously on like an alternate version of Namek. Huh. The one female, the fact that she's in a crystalline world, is that possibly, possibly La Glass? Like, she completely disappeared from Thing, which was kind of weird. She's the only, well, aside from... Kami and Orin, Kami and Orin, that explain why she's in this kind of crystalline area, La Glace. And the one-armed person seems to be walking through ruins representative of Future Trunks' timeline. And the same with the scarred hands, looks like he's on a version of Planet Vegeta. Hmm, you know, the whole mysterious hooded figures thing. 
is so played out. It's so Kingdom Hearts. But you still got me questioning, what's these hooded people's deal? Okay, so we switch to Area 1. That seems to be a Namek frozen in time. You have Team 5, Dr. W, versus Team 2, Son Goku Zeno and Vegeta Zeno. As Dr. W unleashes a mighty blast, shouting, Fuhahaha! We meet again, you stupid monkeys! Zeno Vegito, Vegeta dodges as Zeno Goku goes in for a kick. Zeno Vegeta state this voice and this annoying way of speaking aren't you the cyborg bastard from back then and vegeta then thinks back to that time and says speaking of which you kept mocking me the last time zeno vegeta's anger comes to a boil and he says out of my way kakarot i'll beat the shit out of him zeno goku can only uh just look on like huh okay dr w says are you sure it takes two of you to keep up with me, and you can barely keep up with me, my speed alone. Zeno Goku backs off, saying, I'll give you only three minutes. And as Zeno Vegeta starts to power up, he says, Don't think you can squirm your way out of this, you stupid cyborg bastard. Meanwhile, in Area 2, the dystopian Future Earth Zone, ah, you have Future Trunks walking through the wreckage, say, thinking to himself, I need to get out of this tournament as soon as possible. Gotta get back the scroll of time stolen by Aeos. I'm sure Lady Supreme Kai of Time will do something about the erased history. But the one-armed hooded figure leaps from atop a building towards future Trunks. But Trunks notices and dodges out of the way before his, the attack can hit. As Trunks shouts, a warrior in black is Team 2, Trunks Zeno. Okay, so I guess I should call him Trunks Zeno then. Versus future warrior in black. Future, huh? And as Trunks... Gets a bit of a look at this future warrior in black. He sees the makings of a familiar scar on the warrior's left eye. And he shouts, Huh? You! Don't tell me you are! And thus we end our chapter with the statement, Two people who are not supposed to cross paths. Yeah, it's totally future Gohan. But, you know, even if I'm on the money about who these warriors in black are, why did they serve Ao? Is it that they're being controlled? Or did she promise them something? And how were they saved from their tragic fate? After all, Bardock, future Gohan, they both perish very unfortunately. Wouldn't saving them create even more instability in time? Maybe Aos isn't as concerned with the security of space-time as she lets on. Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments section below. Who do you think all of the warriors in black are? And why do they fight for Ao? I can't wait to hear from you. But hey, subscribe. That way you don't miss out on the next chapter reaction. Or don't. I ain't your daddy, but I still love you like one. Until next time, I've been Deuce Is Then. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, buh bye bye